Okay, so hi all, and uh, welcome to uh, <coughs> this uh, second video in the spring vibration or vibrational modeling um, material. Uh, we'll, in this video, finish up kind of where I left off in the last uh, video, which is uh, t we were almost at the end of getting our our model all, all set up. Um, uh, so we'll do that, of course, and finish that and get a model in front of us, and then we'll uh, try a problem and see how it goes. Um, so uh, I'll give the very quick recap of our setup from the last video, and also I have a couple of edits. One is just sort of a naming thing that I want you to add to your notes from last time, and one is for you to put a big X on the last thing that you wrote uh, in your notes, because I, I didn't do... well, anyway, I was sort of... I could have done a better job of it, so I will do that uh, now as well. But before we do that, before we get to any of that, so what's the idea? Um, of course, for second-order ODEs, problems where we have a, um, a second derivative, uh, uh, an exciting uh, new thing that we can model is vibration. Of course, uh, we might think of vibration in, a, um, uh, in the sense of many different uh, uh, areas. In fact, most things, most moving things vibrate. It, it doesn't necessarily mean vibration as in something that's shaking, as in you can sort of tell that it's vibrating, but just things in general as they live and operate and move and evolve have a certain vibration to them as well. So um, uh, now we are going to sort of comically study something that is sort of straight out of a uh, um, uh, uh, cartoon, I guess, uh, uh, idea of vibration, which is a spring, a, uh, a coil, right? A spring that is uh, bouncing around and around and around and, uh, you know, trying to see if we can come up with an equation with an ODE and then eventually solution that models that behavior. And of course I say this comically because we kind of know what a spring does. Um, there aren't going to be a whole lot of surprises like, oh my gosh, I would have never thought that that spring would bounce around, you know. But, um, but it's nice to use this as a nice intuitive uh, model that we can get to reasonably quickly. So our general setup is that we have a spring of length little l, and that's just the spring itself. Then the idea is, and it's hanging, right? So we're gonna probably mostly draw our pictures as sort of the spring being attached to like the ceiling so that things hang down. You could equivalently do a model of uh, where it's the spring is attached to the floor and then, you know, you're doing the vibration that way. You have to change things around a little bit there, obviously, because of what gravity does, but the other principles are all uh, the same. Uh, but anyway, so we have this spring of length little l that is um, hanging. And what do we do in order... Now, this isn't to get the problem started just yet, but to get the system set up is that there's going to be a mass hanging on the end of the spring. The idea there being, of course, that the spring itself is perhaps a negligible um, mass itself. Um, so we say, oh, well, let me put a weight at the end or a mass on the end, a ball or a box or whatever. Now, of course, what happens when we do that, if we put this, uh, this mass on the end, we all know that that means the spring is going to stretch down. Now, of course, it's going to probably do a little bit of wobbling and bouncing, but eventually it will come to rest. So the second picture here is the, what we're going to call the equilibrium point of our system, which is where the original length little l uh, spring has been stretched to a length of what I guess I would call that L plus L if I was going to add that up. But the important thing is the big L is the amount of elongation at, at equilibrium. Okay, now none of that's part of the setting the problem in motion yet. That's all the setup. Uh, now we're going to set the problem in motion. So we're going to do, first of all, we're modeling displacement. So U, I don't know why we don't use Y, but uh, U, we will use U as our function. Um, U is going to model the displacement from equilibrium. So I think looking at the picture is probably helpful here. Um, if equilibrium is this dotted line here, that's a U value of zero, then um, what does it mean to say, you know, wh how are we measuring displacement? So if U is negative, whatever amount, that's the amount that U would be above the equilibrium point. On the other hand, if u is negative whatever, we would say that's the amount that you are below 
I just said that completely backwards, didn't I? Yes, I did. Sorry about that. <laughs> if u is negative, that's the amount that you're above equilibrium, and if u is positive, it's the amount that you're below. It's hard to say it backwards, right, because it's sort of a little bit against our intuition. We usually think of up as positive and down as negative, but because we want all the coefficients to come out positive, we're actually just flipping everything. So um, no big deal, but we just have to sort of remind ourselves of that. All right, so u of t, that's the thing we want the ODE for. We want to be able to say, oh, could you tell me what the displacement from equilibrium is going to be at time t? Now, of course, these are obviously all word problems, and we can all already agree that word problems are harder, and uh, this is going to be no different in the, <coughs> in the sense that, um, you know, there's going to be sort of real-life questions thrown at you of, tell me about when this thing is wherever. You're always going to have to sort of think about it, though, in terms of displacement. So. Uh, you'll know what I mean when we get to the, to the problems, but just sort of come back to this in case you're not sure. Well, how would I know when it's, you know, I don't know, uh, uh, 10 inches from the top? Well, if the equilibrium length would be 15, then you know the displacement would be negative uh, 5. I forget what numbers I made up, but you know what I mean. Okay, you can piece these things together. Um, but, but as long as we can come up with a model for u, which is displacement, uh, we should hopefully be able to answer all these questions. So we set out to do our usual exploration of motion, and we ran into our old friend Newton, uh, who had a wonderful idea that still works for us here, it always works, uh, which is uh, F equals MA. So forces, the forces acting on an object is equal to the mass of the object times the acceleration of the object. Now for us, since U is position or displacement, then U double prime would be acceleration. So this is, of course, why we're going to have a second order ODE, because we already see a U double prime in our lives. Mass is mass, right? That's just whatever the mass of the object is. And the, but the, okay, but F, right? Force or forces, because there will be several, three in fact, uh, that, that's the piece that we have to do a little bit of um, unpacking. So we started this and we got to the, e we did the two easy forces first. So as this ball or whatever's hanging on the end of the spring is bouncing up and down, what forces are acting on it? Well, I think there are three. These are two gimmies. One is obviously gravity. And uh, as much as the, your tendency is to want to always put a negative in front of those, remember down is positive. So the fact that gravity pulls us down, which we know that, means these numbers are actually positive, 9.8 or 32, depending on which system we're in. <coughs> OK, so that's gravity. Uh, the, then uh, the force that we've already talked about this course is, is um, drag or resistance, and that's the idea that, of course, an object that's moving is moving through air or water or whatever it's sitting in, and that air or water or whatever um, offers resistance to, uh, to its movement. And we already discussed this at length, that uh, drag or resistance um, is opposite because it tries to keep you from moving, but it's related to, in other words, it's proportional to how fast you're going. So I think we come up with a nice, easy, usual line about drag, which is that the force due to drag is, uh, since we want these to all be positive, I'll say negative, we'll use um, gamma, negative gamma, uh, times u prime. u prime is the velocity, right? u is position, u prime is velocity. Now, what I just want you to throw in here, um, if you would modify your notes a little bit, first of all, let's make our r a d which I think you can artistically do as I just did. Um, and that's not so much, I mean, it, it, these words are all fine, right? I mean, physics people and math people and engineering people, they all seem to want to come up with their own word that, mean all, that all mean the same thing. So some people might say resistance, others might say drag, and I'm going to throw a third word at you, which is the word that the book uses, which is why I'm throwing it in here, um, which is damping. So damping, or you know, force of damping, is uh, the other term, that means the same thing as drag and resistance, all right? So um, this is the, yeah, the damping force. It's, a, it's, it's just yet another word to mean the same thing. So I'll try to use damping uh, more so than those other two words because that's what the book uses and that's what the homework problems use. All right, so um, gamma is called the, maybe instead of drag, we'll call it, I mean, again, these are all perfectly fine to me, but uh, I think the book will call it the damping constant or damping coefficient. Okay, so 
just add that in there and, and maybe do FD instead of FR so it could stand for damping. All right, that isn't where I had my mess up. <laughs> uh, this is where I had my mess up in the last video. So um, I'm going to redraw this for you. So if you want in your notes, I think it's probably not a bad idea to more or less do that um, and just sort of say, oh, okay, re redo, redo. But uh, okay, so what we're not going to redo is the, is the fact that what is the third force acting on the object? So I've got gravity, we know that. I've got resistance or damping, as we're going to now call it, uh, which is uh, air, air resistance or water resistance. But also, of course, this is not our skydiver who is subject to these two, one and two. But that's about it for our skydiver, right? There isn't much else happening in his life aside from gravity pulling him down and hopefully air resistance holding him up so that he doesn't uh, crash, right? Uh, but that's it. Well, but a spring, a spring is a real thing. It's a solid structure of a piece of metal or whatever. So that itself imparts or, or contributes a force on this ball that's at the end of this spring, right? This ball isn't just bouncing around magically just with air and gravity. There's an actual spring there. And of course, the spring itself is doing something, it's, it's uh, affecting the, the ball, right, the, this mass. So there is indeed, so now we're going to redo this, so there is indeed a third force, which is um, the spring force, or the force of the spring, Fs. All right, so I'm going to draw you a picture. Most of what I had before was fine. I just, I, I goofed a little bit on a, a little bit of a vocabulary thing. So if I read, I'll draw you several versions of our, of our spring setup here. So I'll, I'll go back to the original. So that's our original spring. That's of length L. That's just the spring, right? Nothing hanging on it. Another version of this would have the original L and then our elongation, and that's, of course, our equilibrium picture. Right? So that had L plus little l plus the original plus the original elongation, and of course that's our u equals zero, no displacement. Oh, okay. And how else does our picture look sometimes? Well, sometimes our picture looks um, extra elongated. I guess I'll call it that way. Right? So sometimes this is our picture where um, the uh, mass is even lower, which of course means u is positive. And sometimes it might be uh, condensed a little bit. In fact, maybe I'll try to really make it small. Yeah, okay. And that would be a U of ne a negative U. Okay, so just uh, sort of in order, chronological order, right? Uh, originally you have a spring, little l. You hang the thing on the end, that makes it stretch l more, elong e makes it elongate l more. And then, of course, sometimes in the life cycle of this thing, the um, spring is even lower, which means u is actually positive, right? So, of course, in this case, I have original l, elongation l, and then however much u is. That's this one. That's the rest of it. And since u is positive, that makes sense, hopefully. Now, in my third picture, I guess I'm actually like sort of I'm compressed, right? So I should have put that right there. Put it off to the side here. So of course, I have a negative u in this case. So in that case, u, of course, would be that measurement right there. It would be how much uh, from equilibrium, right? This is always our equilibrium line. I'll keep dotting that in there. That's u equals zero. Okay, so these are the, I guess, four, if you want to say, even though it's really just the, the last three um, that are when it's actually kind of, when the, when the mass is on the end there. Um, but those are, our, those are our characters, right? Those are really, we're in one of those four cases, I guess, or really one of the last three cases at all times. We're either above or below, or we're right on equilibrium. Sorry, that's a zero. <clears throat> okay, so let's get to this now. So we, we said some things that are accurate before, but I just want to sort of clarify. So what is the spring? So in thinking about the force of the spring, okay, 
So let's all go back to you know third grade or wherever. Just have a simple mind about about thinking about this. What does the spring want to do? Now we have four pictures here. So I think you should be able to think for a minute and at least tell me what is the spring trying to do? And by trying to do, of course, I mean what force, what direction is the spring itself, not gravity, not resistance. What is the spring trying to do to the mass in these four pictures? Well, it's a trick question because in the first case, maybe I should be labeling these, right? A, B, C, D or something. Um, in A, well, there is no <laughs> there is no mass, so I can't really answer that question. But I do want to ask and answer that question for B, C, and D. What is the spring trying to do, or what force is it exerting in those three cases? Let's do C and D first, because those are the two we did before, and those are easy, I think. So think about this, think about C. So the spring is elongated quite a bit, right? I mean, it used to be this small, and now it's stretched way down here. So what is the spring trying to do to the mass? Hopefully you would agree that the spring itself is trying to pull the mass up, right? The spring is saying, hey, get back here. So I think the spring is trying to pull, uh, uh, is pulling up. So the force of the spring, remember, up is negative. So the force of the spring would be negative at this point. Okay, because it's pulling, right? Hopefully that makes sense, right? The spring itself wants the mass to come up, or it's pulling, right? It's a force. It's pulling it up. The opposite is true in D. When you compress the spring, and the, you shoved it way up here, the spring is desperate to, spread, to stretch back out, you know, to L. Uh, so it's trying to push the mass down. So in this case, the spring is trying to push it down, and again, remember, down is positive. Okay. Now, let's, so those are, I, I want to say those are hopefully no-brainers, right? So, so far, we're doing pretty good, or by that I mean, it seems pretty clear, hopefully, that the spring is, op is the opposite sign as displacement. So if, right, so if U is negative, the spring is positive, the spring force is positive. If U is positive, the spring force is negative. Okay, so it sounds like we're going for another one of these. It's opposite. Um, in the opposite direction. Um, okay. Uh, now, even though in case B, I guess here's where we have to think for a minute. Now, case B is the case where the, the, the um, object is at equilibrium. So let's pretend it's not even moving, right? It's just resting. We know that picture B is the natural moment, the natural equilibrium moment, where the spring comes to rest, and it's just hanging out there. So we're going to use this in a minute, but let's, let's do a little bit of thinking first. What is the spring trying to do to the ball, or to the box, in picture B? So think about that for a minute. What is the spring, you know, is the spring, uh, how is the spring pulling? Is it pulling it up? Is it pulling it down? Is it not pulling it at all? What's, you know, what's happening here? And here's where I'd be very impressed, and if we were together, <laughs> I'd be very impressed with whomever raises their hand and comes up with the right answer to this. So think about it for another couple of seconds here. So, okay. So this is at rest. So it's not moving. So I have no, there is no movement at this point. So there is no um, drag or resistance or damping as we're calling it today. So there is no force to, at this moment anyway, right? It's just, it's, it's at rest. It's just hanging out there. There is no drag. There is no resistance. Okay, right. So, okay, well now the object isn't moving, true, is gravity still pulling on this, even when it's at rest? And I can see you all nodding your heads yes, of course it is. Gravity is still pulling on this, uh, this box, but why isn't it moving? Well, it's not moving, because the spring is pulling it up in the same proportion, or not, I'm sorry, in the exact same amount of force as the gravity pulls it down. 
I'm going to say this and I'll write it down, I promise. Right, but let me at least just make a couple quick notes here. Let's make an easy note first. So in picture B, is the, is the spring doing something to the box in picture B? Absolutely it is. It would be a little crazy to say that the spring is doing nothing to the box right now because, hello, the box is hanging on the end of the spring, right? I mean, you could sort of almost see it, hopefully, if we had one in front of us. The box is pulling, or the weight, you know, the weight of the box is pulling the spring down. Now, why isn't it moving? Because the spring is holding it up, or you could say pulling it up. So hopefully you would agree that in this picture, the spring force is up. It's pulling it up. So it's negative. Remember, up is negative, right? Well, I shouldn't have put a box there yet. <laughs> so it's, right? Mm -hmm. So hopefully that makes sense, right? I may sort of have you explain this later on. So, um, right? So just because something's not moving doesn't mean, or doesn't mean that there's no forces acting on it. Now, what's different about picture B and picture C? We could sort of imagining picture C as, you know, this thing is bouncing, so it's moving. What's different about these two, though, while their spring force is negative, in other words, it's pulling the box up, why does it come to rest in a picture like B? Is because I believe it should be the case that the force due to the spring, which is pulling up, and gravity, which is pulling down, should be the same. That's how equilibrium is achieved. And that's how we say an object doesn't move, is if there are forces acting on an object, but it's not actually moving, that must mean the forces are in balance or have reached an equilibrium. I'm sure there's 5,000 ways to say this. All right, so uh, um, let me add that to my little box over here, right? So I think in this case, right, the force, oh, oh, right, and of course gravity's down, so it's a positive quantity. Uh, spring force in this case is negative. Right, so they're going to be equal, but just negative equal. So uh, let me give myself a little more space here. So spring force and gravity force are balanced. Okay, or you could say they add up to zero, right? If that makes more sense to you. Maybe it, should I say that? Uh, I'll write them both down. All right, so if you like that, if you like saying, oh, they're the same, but one's positive and one's negative, that would mean balanced, right? Uh, if you prefer, you could, al you could also say spring force plus gravity force gets is, is zero because, right, one's pulling up, one's pulling down, and if you add them up, they balance out. You get no force. Oh, no force. That sounds, no net force, maybe I should say, right? No net force. That sounds pretty good. That sounds like an object that wouldn't be moving. Hmm. Okay, so hopefully all of that makes sense, because now we're going to get to actually do a couple the, the the last little pieces over here. So uh, for this right, all right. So we haven't I've done nothing helpful yet in terms of actually deriving this equation. So let's finally do this, and now I'll correctly state Hooke's law, which I a little bit botched last time. Um, so Hooke's law uh, says the spring force is. So we already a little, well, I don't want to say we proved, but we certainly at least demonstrated that the spring force should be um, negative, uh, or opposite, I should say, right? It's in the opposite direction as, as um, uh, position, I guess I should say, or something, something to that effect. But what's Hooke's law actually says? So, so Hooke's law says that the, um, the force of the, uh, of the spring is proportional... to the, now here's where I didn't quite write the right thing last time, to the total elongation of the spring. <clears throat> and by that, of course, we mean We mean as compared to little l, picture A. 
Now, I don't want you to get too concerned or upset or, or, or confused about this because this is the tool that we're going to be discussing for about five more minutes in order to be able to get our equation. Once we have our equation, we're going to pretty much just be relying on jumping into our equation and saying, okay, now go, right? So this is the, this is the nitty gritty we're deriving the model thing. So while I will say, of course, you know, I like to ask you to explain things to me and I might ask you to explain any one of these things to you, to me. Uh, but in terms of practice and in terms of problems, in terms of, you know, you're going to bypass all of this. So, so, mm -hmm. okay. Um, but hopefully this makes sense, right? And this is just a, a law, right? Hook, hook was obviously a person. Um, says that uh, the spring force should be proportional. We know what proportional means. Proportional means it's equal, but there's a constant multiplier. Um, to the total elongation. Now, by total elongation, we mean how much is this different than just the spring itself? So, in other words, little l. So, big L is part of the elongation, but what else is thrown in there? Well, what else is thrown in there is u, right? Because I, I mean, c is the best picture to look at. How much has this spring been elongated? It's l plus u. That's true over here too. How much has the spring been elongated? L, uh, 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 um, big L plus u, which happens to be zero here, which is, hello, how we're going to figure this out, but uh -huh. but that's true also over here, right? How much is it? L plus u, u's negative, so of course in that case I would actually be subtracting, but that's, that's correct, all right? So total elongation we mean as compared to L, I'm just going to keep a long <laughs> run on sentence here, and what is that, or how, how in our model? Total elonga elongation is L plus U. Okay, again, just sort of come back to the picture. I think it's helpful, right? Especially picture C. That's the, where it's easiest to see. How much has this elongated? Well, duh, L and then u more units, right? This is another good reason why we made u positive, so that this is really, I don't know, you know, 5 inches plus 8 inches, so 13 inches. But the same is true over here, right? If, this, if u is negative 4 and l happens to be 7, I forget what I just said a minute ago, then, uh, oh, okay, then negative 3. Yeah, that's still the total elongation, even if it's a negative quantity, right? Like, like I said, look mostly at C. But it's true at B also, right? And even in picture B, because U is zero. So the total elongation is just L. All right? Okay, so, uh, so, uh, so it's proportional. And we also, of course, saw over here that it's opposite. All right, so let me pull this all together. Since um, FS, the spring force, is also opposite, and proportional, according to Hooke's law, proportional to elongation. I think we should then say, all right, so how do I say that in, in symbol land? So if spring force is opposite, but proportional. I don't have a cute story for you, but we use K for the constant, for, for, for spring constant, as it's going to be called. And then times elongation. L plus U. Okay? Where K, which is always going to be positive, is the spring known as the spring constant. Or sometimes this is known as the constant of elasticity. I think more so in a physics uh, class. Alright? So K is going to be given to us in the problem. Or some information will be, you know, given that we can figure out K. But mostly it's... Um, oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm completely lying. K will not be given to us in, our pro in the problem because K is going to be something that we're going to very easily be able to compute, which we're going to do right now. But, okay, so that's the big one right there. So that's lots of moving pieces, no pun intended here, but I think hopefully from the picture and thinking about it, and <laughs> hopefully this makes sense. This is, of course, what we're going to extract, though, is mostly just this last thing. But before I go to the next slide and say, ah, all right, 
So this is a thing, great. But what do I know is true in moment B? Now in moment C and D, I don't really know anything beyond, oh, in this case it's stretched, in this case it's compressed. But in picture B here, I know it's at equilibrium. So I happen to know, now we're going to cash in on this other observation we made down here, I happen to know that in picture B, when the elongation is exactly big L, because U is zero, when the total elongation, that's over here, is just big L, in other words, this is zero, so just big L, then the spring force would be negative KL. But in order for this to balance with gravity, which of course is mg, I would have to, I could set them equal to each other. So I'm, I'm going to write this down now. I'm going to say, so get all of that. And now we're going to make a clever observation. So how do we know what k is? So to compute k, the spring constant, I'll just start with the sentence here. Notice that at equilibrium, the total elongation is big L. Not big L plus U. I mean, it is, but of course U is zero. And since the mass is at rest, we can conclude absence of any other force, that the force due to gravity plus the force due to the spring have to add up to zero. Okay, this is just our little argument from a few minutes ago, right, over here in the box. All right, so either one of these, whichever you prefer. You could either write down this one or this one, because they say the same thing. Oh, but what's the force due to gravity? That's mg. And what's the force due to the spring? Well, we just wrote down that it's k negative k times elongation. But in this case, elongation or total elongation is just big L. And so if that's true, well, I have a formula now staring me in the face that says k would equal mg over L. So for sure. So for sure put a box around that, because this is the freebie now, that unless they give you, because I think some of the book problems, they just give you a K, they don't want you to have to chase this around. But if they don't give you K, for sure you know how much G is, it's gravity. For sure you know the mass, because it's the mass. For sure that's in the problem. And the, this L, this initial elongation, that'll be in the problem too. All right? So if they don't give you K, you can compute K by just doing this. All right, so let's pull all the pieces together. We're finally ready to do that. So pulling all the pieces together, all the forces, really. And pulling them all together into the ODE, which we started such a long time ago that let's remind ourselves of uh, where we were. So of course our ODE is just Newton's, Newton's law. So I think I finally have all three forces um, uh, on paper here, or I've, I've explored them. So let's, let's add them up, right? So F equals MA, or F equals M times U double prime, right? So we have forces, I'll just copy that down, forces equals mass times acceleration, which for us is U double prime. Okay, but the forces now, we have a three. We've got gravity, we've got damping, also known as drag or resistance, and we've got spring. Okay, we'll use M for mass, I think, as we typically do. But we know how much each of these three is right now, so let's fill them in. So gravity is mg, damping uh, is negative gamma u prime, and spring force, we just uh, did some uh, work on here, is minus k uh, 
right, minus k times L plus u. Okay. So these are our, this was the fruit of our labor uh, that we have nice expressions for each of these three. Okay, so um, how am I going to uh, uh, finish this? Well, I kind of want this to maybe be um, a little bit of a nicer uh, format for my uh, for my ODE here. So let me. Uh, let me just do a little bit of rearranging and we'll also kind of make a, a cute observation here. So um, let me just start by multiplying this out a little bit. So I have, prime. I have minus KL and minus KU and then U prime, so that's not fancy just yet. Just distributing. Alright, but now we cash in on this. This, right, which of course this is probably the format you wanted in, but this also says, right, this. So if we look one line above, and that's what I'm about to use now, mg minus kl is zero. mg minus kl. So hello. mg minus kl. That's zero from the previous slide. Well, that's fortunate, isn't it? All right, here I'll draw sort of an arrow that makes it look like it's coming from the last slide. Right. So, all right, all right, all right. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Oh, all right, so let's see. So I got this guy, and I got this guy, and I got this guy. Well, just so it looks nice, let me move it to the right. Let me, I'll move these guys to the right side. So I get a zero equals mu double prime plus gamma u prime plus ku. And this, this is The vibrational model, right, or the ODE for the uh, vibrational model. All right. So this is the big. This is the big one. So this is where we're going to start pretty much all of our problems, right? I don't think, unless I'm asking you to explain something from our past here, I don't think you're going to go through and redo a whole bunch of stuff. I'm just going to start right here and say, okay, the ODE I need to model the spring is mu double prime plus gamma u prime plus ku. M is obviously going to be given, has to be, right? Or, or at least you have the weight. We all remember that weight is mass times gravity. So if they give you a weight, like pounds, uh, uh, you can't use that, right? You have to convert it to slugs. Um, but remember, mass times gravity is weight, right? Okay. Um, but anyway, but this is given or essentially given. This is going to either be just directly given or um, computable. Uh, by an example, and I guess I, that's the best I can say right now. Um, but what I mean by that is that since dr um, damping, that's gamma, damping is proportional to velocity, they're either going to just say, oh, use a gamma of 6 or whatever, uh, or they're going to say, well, the force due to damping is 6 when the velocity is 2 or negative 2. So you're just going to run it through a quick little easy Right? If they give you a velocity and they give you the force, like they'll give you a sort of a for example, you could obviously then compute gamma. Right? Okay. So some of the problems I think do that, and others just are nice and just give it to you. But that's essentially given, right? Given or easily computable. And then k, remember, k is mg over l. m is going to be given, g is gravity, that's obviously given, and I promise that l will also be given. So while you may have to do just a little bit of arithmetic to get going, you're going to know those three numbers, m, gamma, and k, which means you're just going to have a regular homogeneous ODE. And we're very good at solving these, aren't we? This is, of course, what we've been doing for most of the last few weeks, is solving these homogeneous um, 
second order ODEs. So we're going to find the roots of the polynomial, and then we are in one of our three cases. Uh, two real roots, one repeated root, or two complex roots. But in all three cases, we all know that we have the answer in a matter of a minute or two. So it's great. So solving this ODE is going to take you, you know, like I said, a minute or two at most. Getting it set up might take a few minutes. So of course, the natural question should be, aha, all right, well, that sounds pretty good. So far, we're up to you know three, four minutes for a problem. That's not too bad. So how does it get bad? Well, I don't, I don't want to say bad, I guess, but how does, what, what is interesting about these is, of course, now the fact that it's a word problem, we can ask and answer some nice physics-y kinds of questions about what's happening uh, as this spring uh, evolves, right? Or as the path of the spring um, is laid out, what's happening, right? Can we answer some nice questions about that and uh, all those good things, all right? So mostly uh, what's left for me to do for you is just a whole bunch of examples so that you can have a good sense of, um, of what's happening here. Um, so, um, well, I might actually just stop this video a little early so that I'm not kind of in the middle of an example spreading it out over two videos. So, um, so I'm going to call this one, <laughs> this video at least, I'm going to call finished. Um, I'm going to record another one, though, right now um, of at least doing one or two examples so that if you do want to start over the, week, uh, uh, over the weekend with the homework problems, uh, you'll at least have, you know, you'll at least be able to see me do one or two. So if you want, uh, feel free to uh, continue on um, into the next video, but this seems like a very good place to, uh, to stop, so I will.